welcome you this evening, as well as to open our program tonight. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Zavon Tari, who comes to us from Brazil, all the way from Brazil, and of course our Dr. Cody Colton. Um, all the way from the Oh, very <laughs> good. When I don't see Cody down at the yoga studio, he is busy researching about Japanese theater. And it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's program. The catchy name, you say goodbye, we say hello, Robots Theater and the Future of Humanity. If that isn't a catchy title, nothing is. Tonight we get introduced to playwright Oraza Harata and the roboticist Hiroshi Ishiguro and how they collaborated and came up with robots in Japanese theater. And I think it's going to be a very interesting evening. We get to see film, uh, all sorts of multimedia things, which is why we're in this very large room. So welcome tonight, and over to you, Cody. Thank you very much. Uh, early science 
films of, of Miliesi. Um, I'm going to skip over uh, the Rude of Grace, but this is an example of early um, Catholic puppetry and uh, its relationship to the dissolution of the monasteries and iconoclasm. Um, but I want to move into Japanese culture now and uh, the relationship between uh, puppets and robotics and Japanese theater. Um, here is an example of a kabuki play in which uh, the actors behave as if they were puppets. Uh, the play is called Street Puppet Sanmaso, Ayatsuri Sanmaso. And it's, uh, there are all sorts of forms of Sanmaso in classical Japanese theater. It's a, it's a ritual, felicitous um, uh, performance uh, that predates no. It's one of the most ancient of the uh, theatrical forms. And here uh, we see it, it being performed by an actor who is pretending to be a puppet. The Japanese are fascinated with inanimate objects and, uh, and inanimate objects that are made animate uh, in various ways. And uh, they even have a term in the Kabuki theater for actors behaving as puppets. It's called Ningyo Guri. Um, and there was a long tradition, uh, in fact, in rivalry between uh, the Kabuki theater, which is a theater of live actors, and the puppet theater. Um, which uh, both uh, were very active at the same time and were vying for audiences. So uh, Kabuki was uh, stealing uh, left, right, and center from uh, the very popular puppet theater for texts as well as different other styles. Uh, here you see a puppet performing the same Sambaso dance, uh, and this is a uh, still taken from a um, puppet play. Note that there are three manipulators here for the puppets, just as there were uh, in the case of, of, uh, of the Hensbury Puppet Company uh, theater production of War Horse. Here you see a Woodrock puppet and uh, the manipulator, single manipulator who's just doing a demonstration. Normally he would have two assistants. Uh, and he is showing the gestures of a woman and how uh, movement is gendered. Uh, the puppeteer here is a gentleman by the name of Kiritake Kanjiro, the fourth, I think. Um, and uh, he was actually commissioned uh, by the roboticist uh, Ishiguro Hiroshi and playwright um, uh, Hirata Orisa uh, to help um, work on uh, the simulation of lifelike uh, movements uh, for their robots. Um, here you have uh, an example of something called an ikiningyo, a living doll uh, that's a fad in the uh, early 19th century of creating these extraordinarily lifelike um, and life-sized uh, human dolls made of wood, painted, um, and uh, remarkably lifelike uh, that were exhibited at various uh, kinds of uh, circus sideshows and fairs and carnivals. <coughs> and then you have uh, the mechanical automata, of which Japan has a long tradition uh, dating back to the 17th century of these clockwork um, uh, mechanical dolls. In fact, there were theaters uh, exhibiting these dolls in theatrical performances, cheek to jowl with the puppet theaters um, that existed in Osaka for which uh, Chikamatsu Monzaemon uh, wrote uh, his uh, plays. Here we have uh, a, uh, I'll just read it out, automata or karakuni ningyo were originally separate per from puppets used only in stage machinery or in robot dolls that performed between the acts of, shall we say, live puppet plays. Um, but the machinery eventually found its way into the bodies of the puppets, for example, the mechanisms for the, um, the eyes, uh, for the mouth, uh, for the articulation of joints in the hands, and so on. And this gradual internalization of technology as the 
central trope of the cyborg and the key step in blurring the lines between bodies and tools for humans and machines. In fact, these mechanical automata, these karakuri ninyo, had an important role to play in the development of the puppet technology of the Bundaku theater as it moved from single uh, manipulators of smaller puppets uh, to uh, these bigger um, dolls that were manipulated by three people with various different levers and uh, mechanical um, um, toggles and switches inside uh, to make them more lifelike. Uh, then, of course, you have the bad automaton. Um, uh, not all uh, robots and automata are cute. Uh, this is an example that's a still uh, from a recent kabuki play uh, in which an actor is playing one of these uh, karakuri ninyo. Robots come to Japan and they came very early. Uh, Carol Chapek's uh, RUR, or RUR, Rossum's Universal Robots, uh, was first performed in Prague in 1921. His first performance in Japan was only three years later, and it led to something of a robot boom in Japan in the 1920s. <clears throat> now, uh, to focus on uh, the two gentlemen that I want to talk about, um, on the man, uh, the man in left and the man in black, looking like Jack Palance, is uh, Hiro, Hiroshi Ishiguro, uh, the roboticist. Uh, he's quite famous now. Um, you can uh, just Google his name and you'll find lots of, uh, at least two or three TED Talks by him. Um, and on the right is Orisa Hirata. He's been to uh, Victoria a couple of times and was a visiting professor at UVic. Um, a few years back, and is noted for the very highly hyper-realistic uh, style of drama. Well, the two of them are faculty members at Osaka University, and um, and uh, since uh, 2008, 2009, 2008, 2008 uh, the two of them have been collaborating on um, creating theater with robots. This is the first work um, that they collaborated on. Uh, the robot is saying, I don't want to work. Uh, this uh, short play is about a couple uh, who uh, have two robot servants. Uh, the husband is out of work, and uh, the, um, the male robot servant is starting to mirror uh, his um, his <laughs> as it were, his, 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 his depression and uh, starting to uh, behave uh, like his master, as it were. Uh, the robot that you see here, looking a little bit like uh, one of the Kiwi uh, Kiwi and Lui, uh, is called Wakamaru, and there are lots of Wakamaru robots, and uh, presently Zafin will have more to talk about the Wakamaru robot. Uh, here we see uh, two Wakamaru robots in another play, um, I'm just going to show you a still of, called In the Heart of the Forest from 2010. Uh, the play was originally uh, commissioned uh, by the National uh, Theatre of Belgium, um, and, uh, and uh, he wrote a play which was about Japanese scientists in uh, the former Belgian Congo uh, doing research on bonobos. And in fact, uh, in a kind of an anticipation of uh, the rise of the planet of the apes, uh, the premise was that they were uh, actually precipitating the evolution of bonobos so that they were becoming more and more um, intelligent um, and uh, more and more advanced. Uh, in this new version that he did, uh, he incorporated two robot scientists. You see that they're both wearing white lab coats to indicate that they are scientists. And uh, these two robots are having a conversation about, uh, well, you know, these bonobos, they don't have the, uh, they don't have the, um, the, the larynxes for, for, for actually speaking. Uh, they have emotions, we don't have emotions, but we have communication, they don't have communication. So the play is a kind of a meditation on uh, what makes us human, uh, how are humans different from primates, uh, how are pri uh, humans and primates different from inorganic uh, life forms, uh, which we may assume uh, the Wakamaru robots may be. Uh, here are a couple of quotes from, um, from uh, Hirata and Ishiguro. And 
uh, I'll start with uh, Hirakos. He says, most human com communication is not empathic, but rather based on learned patterns of response to stimuli. My actors were shocked to learn this, but what makes it so congenial to work with the roboticist Ishiguro is in fact I use precisely the same vocabulary with Ishiguro's robots as I do to direct my actors. And so rather than trying to tell his actors to seek the motivation or understand the emotion behind the lines of speech that uh, he has given them to recite, he says, um, speak the next line faster or speak it slower or pause for 1.5 seconds before uh, you start speaking, or raise the volume, or lower the volume. Um, all of these things are highly mat be meticulous, behavioristic uh, kinds of directions that he gives uh, to his actors. Well, for his part, Ishiguro says, androids can express themselves just as well as human actors. I believe that in theater, there's fundamentally no difference between a human and a robot in both directions. Uh, well, here's uh, here, uh, Ishiguro. Um, he, uh, the living one is on the right, as you probably guess. Uh, the one on the left is his uh, double ganger, uh, Geminoid H51. HI stands for Hiroshi Ishiguro, okay, first prototype. Well, uh, not everybody likes what he's doing. Uh, in Wired magazine, uh, when he first came out with HI1, uh, we have this quote from John Bradley, Professor Hikiroshi Ishiguro's robotic doppelganger looks like a creepy waxen mummy. His part cyborg, part real doll, part Shigeru Miyamoto, part Dracula. It's horrible. It hates you. Professor Ishiguro seems oblivious to the latter evacuating creep factor of his Gemini robot. It's interesting that he says, it hates you and not I hate it. So he's already anthropomorphizing and personifying uh, this creepy waxen mummy. Well, uh, Ishiguro has been busy making doubles, including one of his daughter, uh, you see, um, shaking hands uh, with uh, her double. Um, her daughter, uh, Ishiguro's daughter said, uh, after meeting uh, her double, um, I'm not coming to daddy's school anymore. <laughs> well, uh, well, this creep factor, in fact, uh, has been defined by a Japanese roboticist, uh, Mori Masahiro, back in 1970. And this idea of the uncanny value, valley, uh, a graph here, has been much reproduced and much used in, uh, in respect to many different kinds of media, not just robotics, but also uh, talking about CG graphics, animatronics, um, and uh, virtual reality. Uh, here you see on the very left hand of the graph, um, well, we have a vertical axis, which is familiarity. Um, how, how cozy do we feel with these, with, with these robots? And uh, the, um, the horizontal axis is human likeness. Um, as Morimoto says, or Mori, I should say, says, uh, the closer we get to um, human likeness uh, with the robots, um, the more we start familiar, feeling familiar, but then we fall into something called the uncanny valley. Um, and uh, there we will find things like corpses, zombies, and prosthetic hands. And interestingly enough, in Mori's uh, graph, you can see, um, that once we start climbing out of the uncanny valley, we have the Bunaku puppet, of all things. Uh, the puppet has somehow climbed out of the uncanny valley, and we start feeling uh, familiar and friendly uh, to these puppets again. And then up at the top is the healthy person. Uh, Zavin's got another version of this, in fact, which is a revision of Mori's idea, where, in fact, the, 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 the arrows continues to, to, to climb uh, further up to sort of a higher life form, but I'll let Zell talk about that. Uh, here are a couple of quotes. Uh, a healthy person is at the top of the second peak, and when we die, we fall into the trough of the uncanny valley. Our body becomes cold, our color changes, and movement ceases. Therefore, our impressions of death can be explained by the movement from the second peak of the uncanny valley as shown by the dash line in the figure. We might be happy that this line is in the still valley of the corpse and not that of the living dead. I think this explains the mystery of the uncanny valley. Why do we humans have a feeling of strangeness? 
Is this necessary? I haven't yet considered it de deeply, but it may be important to our self-preservation. We must complete the map of the Uncanny Valley to know what is human, or to establish the design methodology for creating familiar devices through robotics uh, research. And it's interesting that he's kind of uh, jammed these two ideas together. To know what is human, on the other hand, um, and on the other, uh, to create the design methodology for creating familiar devices through robotics research. And so this is precisely what Ishiguro is into. He wants to understand what is human by building them, um, and uh, also uh, he's engaged in robotics research, of course. Theories of the uncanny, uh, at least in, in, in the West, uh, go back uh, to these um, uh, gentlemen here. Uh, Freud and his seminal essay on the uncanny is, is uh, rightly very famous, uh, but even prior to Freud, uh, Ernst Anton Jensch uh, wrote um, a, an essay called On the Psychology of the Uncanny. Both of them refer to um, automata, which is very interesting. They use automata as prime examples of the uncanny. Things that look human but aren't quite human. So I've mentioned already uh, the applications of uh, the idea of the uncanny uh, to uh, various different kinds of sort of cutting edge research in uh, simulation at this point in time. I'll be showing a little bit more, but here uh, you see uh, one of their latest experiments, uh, the Android Drama Sayonara. We'll be seeing a bit more of this uh, later, so I will just skip over it. Uh, here you see uh, the star of the Android Grandma Sayonara, or Goodbye, uh, Geminoid F. Uh, F is on the left, and her model is on the right. And excuse me for the cheesy music here, uh, but this is uh, one of the uh, more recent uh, Creations by Ishiguro. Um, it's called uh, Geminoid DK. DK is short for Denmark. Uh, it is uh, designed after a Danish robotics. Still a little twitchy. Um, I, I'm not sure that uh, Ishiguro has got his movements down pat yet. Uh, the simulation, at least the lightness, is, is, is getting pretty close, but the, the, the movement leaves something to be desired. Uh, here are some quotes from, from uh, Ishiguro, which are really uh, thought-provoking, perhaps a little disconcerting. Uh, he says that robots and androids are mirrors reflecting what it is to be human. He says, I am attempting to discover what remains after every human capacity has been downloaded into a machine. People don't possess a mind, and he uses the Japanese word kokoro, which can mean heart, can mean mind, can mean consciousness. It can even, in some cases, mean a soul. Rather, they believe that they recognize the, the existence of mind in one another. And the greatest difference between a physiological organism and a machine is the presence in the former of noise. And I think that's a really interesting definition of, of, of humanity is we are noisy creatures. Uh, the element of chaos as opposed to order is probably what makes us different from the machines. Um, this, uh, I don't know if I want to dwell too much on, uh, but uh, a seminal essay on puppets by uh, the German romantic Heinrich von Kleist, uh, and I'll just uh, focus on the last sentence which is, grace appears most purely in that human form which either has no consciousness or an infinite consciousness, that is, in the puppet or the god. Um, and I think uh, this, this, this goes to the heart of, of, of some of our interests, certainly uh, in uh, the, the life of puppets and perhaps even uh, of robots as well. And perhaps it's not too far from our notion of the uncanny too. Um, and uh, as I'm sort of wrapping up my presentation, I want to uh, zero in on uh, one of the great sort of uh, poets 
of the Japanese, classical Japanese theater, uh, who wrote for puppets because uh, actors changed his lines, uh, Chikamatsu Bonzaimo, uh, who said, uh, someone said, people nowadays will not accept plays unless they are realistic and well reasoned and out. I answered, your view seems plausible, but it is a theory which does not take into account the real methods of art. Art is something which lies in the slender margin between the real and the unreal. And so um, I think that this is getting close to the notion of the uncanny valley as well, that, that, that it, in the pursuit of a greater realism, in fact, we're sort of tipping over into the unreal. And so art is something that balances the two. And uh, just as a kind of a word of warning uh, from uh, Gibbon's uh, history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, when men were no longer found, their place was supplied by machines. <laughs> uh, interestingly enough, the, the Romans had that problem. So I'll stop there. And um, I want to show you a bit of the presentation, but in order to do so, uh, because I don't have, sorry, it's the wrong one, that's that one's
Shotaro, saying that I have to leave, I have to go on a journey, I have to leave my family behind.
and in the mid-90s I started to develop my, my machine for the theatre director Denis Marlowe and uh, from uh, this time uh, I work as a puppeter and uh, in 19, uh, uh, in 1907 I made the first electronic puppet and developed this project in uh, uh, in CalArts in California Institute of the Arts and uh, from 10 years after I met Professor Ishiguru uh, and he told me that I was doing robotics invite me to go to work in his lab and uh, from my work he made this laboratory in uh, 2008 uh, and start to use a theater as a platform of research. I want to show you my first electronic puppet and uh, to explain how uh, Professor Hiroshi Shiguro find an interest uh, in, in my work and why uh, we are working uh, today uh, with the uh, uh, theater and robotic uh, laboratory in Japan. So. So, um, I, I will invent a system of a retro projection, uh, a projection from inside, it's very dark. Uh, uh, so uh, you can go, no, you can go um, from a, a keyboard. I, I, I have in that system to control the movement of the eyes and the movement of the mouse. After I can do the demonstration, I have to go around the computer. So uh, uh, my movement are very archaic. Uh, they are just mechanical movement. Eight movement of the eyes. Uh, and both mouth open and mouth closed. And when I've done this demonstration in Oxford to Professor Ishiguro in 2007, I, I explained that I wasn't uh, working on, uh, on imitation as a roboticist, and I, I was basically working on representation. And he found the idea very interesting because all uh, the the work in robotic laboratory is mostly to try to imitate expression. And from my, my experience, I, de I demonstrate that mostly uh, it's possible to, uh, uh, it's not necessary to do expression because uh, the interpretation is in the eyes of the public. So uh, a theater can be a platform to, to to study uh, behavior, uh, not only human behavior, but uh, um, um, not uh, in relation only with expression, but with uh, uh, social behavior. Maybe I can do a very uh, efficient demonstration at a small app, an, an American. Uh, I'm doing theater. Uh, <laughs> so. I have those, those game for children. I, I don't have a good number for my demonstration, but I think it will be efficient. So, here we have a, a, a mechanical display. And from your point of view, you, you think there's behavior. For example, uh, you can interpret each one uh, with a specific uh, uh, character, specific intention. So uh, it's mostly what I'm doing. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to prove that everything's happened in the eyes of, of the public. Uh, I hope they will not go very far. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I was very afraid because it, 
he's a robot. He's, he's very uncanny, but uh, if he speaks with you very uh, like that, he's, he's uncanny too. <laughs> he's like a samurai. Uh, and uh, he says, so you have to work uh, with us and uh, uh, invited me and I, I had uh, two grants and one grant for, from the Japan Society for for promotion, promotion of science, so it's very serious business. Uh, so the first time uh, I, I, I went to the, the labs and uh, uh, I stayed there uh, during uh, one month and a half, at least I can show up here, uh, to um, 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 I, for me, it was the first time in Japan. So, if you are going to uh, in a robotic laboratory, there's not a lot of human being. There's a lot of machine. So, the uh, the first contact is very strange. So, it, it only is during the first month you stay there. During one month, and, and we have one month because one month, and uh, you just look around. And also the laboratory was open, and I realized that most of the time the robot was like me. They, they was expecting, uh, they was uh, they was uh, off most of the time. So um, I I proposed him uh, uh, to, to Professor Ishiguro to do a, a, a research about passions and impassions of the robots. Uh, I think in the Occident it would be very strange to do such kind of research and say, oh, great, perfect, <laughs> it's a perfect research. And uh, I, I start to work uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on this geminoid. But uh, first I want to show uh, some of the things that happen in the lab. So it's uh, everyday life of the lab that you find this play or dispositive, very strange, it's a very strange situation. Uh, for example, situation of simulation of an everyday life uh, in the street, uh, or um, here, uh, uh, mapping of robot uh, to, to simulate experience in shopping center. And I like this picture because in this picture appears the first robot, uh, uh, Wakamaru. Here it's uh, the grandfather of Wakamaru, it's Robovi, and uh, it's in a lab of telecommunication. And uh, Wakamaru uh, 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 start to be very familiar to me, uh, at least in all the different lab. Uh, uh, Mitsubishi I give uh, because it has been developed in ATR, ATR laboratory, which is a telecommunication uh, research laboratory. And uh, they give back 30 Wakamaru to develop project. Uh, one, two of those projects, or, or two the play, are yet the top thing they have to So uh, you have to consider uh, that the play with Wakamaru is pre programmed Q to Q play. The other play, we didn't say that, uh, uh, with Geminoid, it's tele robotic. They are specific uh, techniques of control, which have a lot of things to do with puppetry. Okay. So, uh, around the laboratory, there was a camera doing many kinds of things or doing nothing most of the time. Uh, and uh, one day I saw the box so Wakamaru in the corridor. And I, I asked my colleague, I said, where is go where is going? Is it, 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 where is going? And, uh, he told me, oh, well, it's going outside for the experiment. But I asked him, but why do this one? And he said, oh, the same. I said, oh, yes, I mean, that's true. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I said, uh, secondly, I said, but uh, if, we, if, we go, if we go alone, he said, it's a robot. So I said, oh, yes. I, and for me, I realized that all those, these days, uh, the normal place for Wakamaru was a lab. And I couldn't imagine him in another world that uh, in the lab. So I start to think, uh, uh, well, um, I should go to see other place where Wakamaru is living, because there's 200 of him that uh, Mitsubishi made. So I, I went to uh, um, um, Yoko, uh, Mitsubishi Museum in Yokohama, uh, which is uh, uh, it's, it's uh, Wakamaru well, not very efficient because um, where Wakamaru well, for a question of equilibrium, uh, 
uh, is this side, like the shark. So uh, most of the time he's looking up and uh, he, uh, he can recognize only 10 faces. And uh, because of the light on his eyes, on his camera, sorry, uh, <laughs> he, 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 a, 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 he can't recognize so easily. So he, he has another program to recognize voice. But there's another problem. Because in a public space, there's a lot of noise, so he can't identify. So he seems quite lost. It's a very, uh, his behavior to start from conversation is quite different from the other ones in the lab. And so I continue my research, and I went to uh, um, a Mitsubishi uh, uh, building uh, at the, uh, at the center of Tokyo. Uh, and uh, it was more pathetic because it's a showroom, uh, everything is black and white with a lot of light, so you, you really need some help uh, to, to start to, to have a, 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 a relation with human beings. Uh, and I continue my research and I found this one, which, which was very, very kind. I had heard of this one. It's exactly the same as the other one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 it, Um, so it, it, it's uh, 
some of the situation in the lab. It's, it's a unique feature of geminoid HI1 and geminoid F. Uh, and uh, the, it's most of the time they are they don't move like that. And uh, I, I just introduced uh, another version of, of the Canipale uh, here. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, at the origin, it was too graphic. Uh, uh, one uh, for when it was published in uh, 1970. One for the moving uh, machine. <coughs> one for the, 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 the still object. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, we put them together, uh, um, it's interesting because it's the idea that in Japan uh, you are always between the um, perfection of steel object and the precision of uh, uh, movement. And uh, in the new uh, uh, graphic in 2005 of uh, Mori, he, he pretends uh, that we can, with a seaboard, we can uh, um, um, have this good uh, uh, nature that he, he described in uh, uh, the traditional uh, Buddhist culture of. Uh, Japan, uh, of Japan uh, at the beginning of uh, Japanese culture. Uh, he, he used, he, he didn't go for the book. He, he, no, he, yeah, he, he, he wrote the book uh, at least about Buddha uh, uh, in a robot. Is, 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 yes. Is Moni's, one of Moni's books. Yeah. It, it's very strange because it's got a parody of a book we read in the A. Zen, Zen, and Zen, and motorcycle. Oh yes, <laughs> you have a lot of things to do with it. It's very strange. And uh, uh, in, in this book, he speaks about specific uh, 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 sculpture of uh, Miroku, uh, uh, and uh, he, he explains also um, his uh, inspiration. Uh, with the gesture of Buddha and the first uh, end of a robot, because Mori is a pioneer of prosthetic uh, robotics in the 60s. Uh, I, I think it, it was important historically because it, it, it joined, uh, it, it made the junction between uh, uh, um, electromechanic uh, uh, and uh, biotechnology. And uh, this is permit the, the prosthetic uh, uh, work and the first end is called for pro, uh, for, pro, for prosthetic. Um, it was a sculpture of Buddha sculpture uh, of Buddha. Um, uh, here I, I, I think I show things very uncanny but it is really the limit, the frontier of the, of the Robotic, uh, robotic, and uh, uh, so when I, I asked uh, uh, Professor Ishkur to work on fashions and invasion, uh, I, I asked to work uh, with the most expensive uh, robots that we had in the lab, and uh, what I discovered um, is uh, that. Um, Everybody was working mostly on social behavior. And uh, once I stayed during 10 hours with this product, uh, and I said, well, nobody's coming to work with uh, this work robot. And uh, I, the day after, I stayed 8 hours. Nobody appeared in the lab. So I decided to ask my, all my colleagues and to look to the uh, agenda uh, and uh, to see how long time they used to work with the robot. And most of the time it was from 20 minutes to one hour and a an half. And uh, I thought, how can we speak about social behavior if we stay one hour and a an half 
with a robot. So I decided to try to make a longer experiment with an operator, and I stay one month and a half every day from 8 hours to 12 hours. And uh, at the beginning, I thought, oh, I'm completely crazy, <laughs> or there's something really interesting. And I think there's something very interesting. Uh, and uh, the point is, uh, um, when you are at a certain distance, in fact, from 10 meters to 5 meters, you have this social behavior. But if you stay longer, maybe you can construct a cultural relationship and maybe intimacy uh, with the robot. And uh, why I say cultural relationship? Because it's a very complicated problem. You have to understand that there are 46 actuators, a lot of programs, a lot of interface, and every day there's something that's not working. So you have to rebuild the relationship on other creatures. Uh, some days the, the eyes don't work, don't follow. Some days the, the, the loop of the respiration don't work. Some days there's a delay between the mechanism of the mouth and the sound. Uh, some other day you will have feedback, you will have strange noise like... So <laughs> if you really, it's uh, as uh, Maurice said, uh, uh, explained with the, uh, Anthony Valley, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of, a, a, um, you have a specific moment you believe and uh, you, you have all the moment that, that you start to believe, but all the time you reconstruct this relation. At the end I will show uh, uh, my last experiment, my last experiment with the genuine way. Uh, and what I realized that in the lab it's, what, the experiment was mostly like a uh, Turing uh, experience and it was always very frontal in, in kind of pass a pass with the robot. And as you saw in, in the play, um, the theater of Orisai Rata is quite perfect. Uh, to develop another kind of experiment with the robot. I mean, uh, the robot is not in a frontal display in front of the audience. It's, in, in, it's looking in the direction of the actress. And this brings more natural situation. And uh, you don't focus on the object, on uh, the object of the experiment, on the robot. You focus on this situation. So before the, uh, we start to, to do a play, uh, I've done an experiment eating simply uh, 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 an apple with a, with a rubber. Uh, so uh, when you arrive at work in the morning, it's uh, the state of the you know, It's very pathetic. It's very <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I show you a few images of the everyday life in the lab. This is in a in a in a doll, uh, love doll factory so with an engineer uh, working on the shoulder of a doll, and uh, it's kind of an everyday situation. It's a red uh, two two looking to a student uh, programming movements. I, I like those pictures because uh, I'm mostly working on the effect of presence. So if you imagine you are in a cinema and you have somebody in front of you, there's very, very few elements that give you uh, uh, the, the uh, authenticity of, uh, of a human being. Because you, you see somebody from behind, you don't have a lot of elements, uh, just maybe the respiration, things like that. So. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm very interested in all, all, all this idea of presence, effect of presence in the lab. And uh, uh, this is uh, the copy, the clone of you, uh, uh, which have been used uh, for Gemini, uh, for Ready to Do. And uh, um, I, I, I was doing my experiment with a, a German stu uh, a, a student. And uh, what she was programming Gemini uh, Replicate 2, and she was doing 
very strange movement. Uh, first of all, uh, it's difficult uh, for a foreigner in Japan. If you are a woman, it's worse, and if you are a woman in a robotic uh, uh, world, it's, it's stranger. And, but she programmed movement of the, uh, of the hand, and uh, the, the, head, the, the hand was uh, touching the head, and uh, um, Professor Ishiguru was very upset because it was very dangerous for the puppet, uh, for the uh, robot. And, but I realized that it, the hair, you can't control the movement of the hair. So it was a very natural movement. So I asked for Ilona to work with me because I thought our study was very interesting. Uh, so uh, um, she was the, the person which was uh, behind uh, the Jiminoid the uh, I1 during the experiment. Uh, it's some features of the Geminoid uh, um, without the, well, the skin out of the body. I give you an idea that it's how it is built and it's the part inside. So it's a machine. very strange because the, the mouth is kind of humid and the eye of is very impressive. And <coughs> the picture that give an idea. And a few features of the when uh, we have when we have to carry the robot from the laboratory to the theater, I thought it was uh, very interesting to um, observe uh, how an Experimental object become an actress or uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it's, it's not you have a, a kind of empathy and a kind of conviction, and uh, you project a lot of things in, in, in the machine. And, and for for me, it was kind of big emotion those moments, and I was very very impressed. I thought it's something something to really. Question: uh, What is it? At this very first um, at this uh, moment, uh, what what are we looking at? So uh, it's uh, it's a play with all its I think we, um, it's with uh, Minako Inoue. It's uh, the actress that uh, controls. The, she's the operator. Yeah. yeah, she's the operator. And uh, you see, she's taking care of the air every before every uh, uh, show. <coughs> she go there, and if Professor Shiguru is there to take out, the, oh, he wants a, the air is more natural now because uh, it, it makes them more look alike or alive. And, and but uh, she's uh, she has to uh, really be inside. Kind of, she she really working trying to be inside the puppet before to control the puppet. She takes her, she is the reference of the angle for the conversation with, with the actress, uh, this kind of thing. So I, I, I remember an interesting comment that, that Ishimoto made. He, he said when he was operating his double, at some point somebody touched uh, the android. Yeah. And he felt like he could feel it himself in his yes. own body yes. because he had sort of projected himself yes. so much into the body of the, of the end. It, it, it's happened. Yeah. If somebody touched the, the, the part of the determined part of the body, the, the operator reacts. Yeah. It's kind of a, too much intimacy uh, uh, in determinate moments. It's very strange. And uh, we have some time problem of communication in the lab. But and uh, uh, well, it's uh, when we traveling with, with uh, the okay, we we carry uh, it's, it's very cruel, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so the the second time I've done a research there, uh, it was uh, uh, on micro uh, about the first research. Sorry, it wasn't. Totally silly to work on passions and infections because last year, uh, Japanese uh, research center in Okinawa, which is called 
voiced, uh, have uh, discovered uh, an algorithm about uh, patients in, in a rat, which, be, which will be applied in robotic. So the, we had uh, this conversation about uh, robot call in, in Canada, <laughs> and uh, for example, an algorithm about uh, patients uh, have application in, in telecommunication. Uh, and it's a kind of a cognitive delay we can create uh, in a program that gives the impression that you have kind of intelligence on the other side. Uh, uh, next month, I, I will give a conference for a research center in France for the L'Observatoire Nivea for the cosmetic company. And uh, it's very strange. Uh, the, they, are, they are doing a study about the skin, about the image of the body. And uh, they asked me uh, um, why uh, Japanese are doing such kind of robot, uh, anthropomorphic, very realistic, ultra realistic robot. And uh, I, 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 my presentation is to explain why they're doing this in a telecommunication uh, research center. And uh, uh, there's a specific reason. And my second research is about micro movement, it's about effect of presence. It's because uh, uh, Japanese uh, have a different uh, um, relation with uh, um, communication, maybe. And uh, for them, it seems evident that the effect of presence is a condition of uh, communication. For us, everything is information, everything is communication. But uh, as a them, I believe that there's a very different thing between uh, effect of presence and communication. Uh, effect of presence is a condition of communication. For example, if you uh, remember an, an, an old telephone, when you was uh, speaking, the first thing you was saying it was, uh, uh, how are you? Now with a cell phone you say, where are you? <laughs> and maybe uh, uh, this video conference, this video conference, or, or this kind of uh, 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 tele-robotic communication, you will say, is it you? Uh, you start to uh, question uh, the identity. So, uh, uh, telecommunication, uh, effect of presence is very, very important for, for telecommunication because if you have a strong effect of presence, you don't need to communicate that much because a big part of it is gone. You know? So, uh, um, if you, uh, it's, it's very important uh, those kind of research with a very, very ultra reality uh, 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 rubble uh, because we can study, we can learn more about human communication. Uh, a robot, it's a platform of experiment. Uh, those robots are a platform about for communication, telecommunication, uh, skin, interface opposite the eyes, eye contact. Uh, air implantation, uh, uh, movement, synchronization of the movement, mechanical movement with, uh, with uh, voice. Uh, it's a lot, 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 lot of research at the same time. Uh, cognitivism, artificial intelligence, mechanic, electromechanic, optic. So it's, it's, it's a platform. And uh, Uh, let's see if I have um, and uh, yeah and uh, for example uh, as a conclusion maybe and so I answer the question um, um, for example when they ask uh, 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 master adventure trade tra uh, to to work to help to program uh, uh, Gemini F, uh, he, he, he explained about the posture as a boon right uh, 
uh, like uh, the, the two bands, like uh, uh, women uh, in the common life in Japan, uh, um, and this part of the body a little bit in the front, and uh, to have a specific orientation uh, in the evolution we for the dive and dive off. Uh, he recommend a few things. But for example, when when I uh, I was there, I was studying micro movement, uh, and I realized, for example, that this is more impressive impressive as an effect of present than if I'm doing the that. Why? Because it's skin, uh, and my skin got conscious of my not the envelope of my body, which is the skin of this hand. Of even if I touch uh, another envelope of my body, which is a part of clothes. So what I'm doing uh, today, it, it's uh, uh, I'm program uh, kind of thick, little little movement, very uh, slow, but very short in time, or, or very short, um, uh, or, or very short in space. For example, if I touch here, if I touch my skin here, so uh, it's look very strange, but uh, uh, it's making a lot of uh, economy for the lab because uh, until now, as I said, they are working on imitation. So if you look at Geminoid uh, uh, HI1, he's doing that. He's, he's got a loop. Uh, and the uh, loop is very heavy to program, and also to don't make a repetitive uh, 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 program, you have to make a loop of 10 minutes or 20 minutes, so it's not a program. And instead of that, I pretend it's possible to program very short movement every 5, 7, 10 minutes, and we don't need more than 7 movements to give the impression of life. And this is a, a very big economy program. And through that, uh, we pretend, and through the work of Orisa and we pretend that uh, we can put more drama in robot and less program. We can induce uh, 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 more uh, element of dramaturgy uh, instead of just frame programming to imitate. Uh, human being. Um, it's a finality of my work there. The, uh, Professor Ishiguro called me a robot drama researcher. And it, it's, it sounds a little bit absurd, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a really uh, very strong economic implication for telecommunication for the lab. Just, uh, if you have questions, uh, uh, we can answer, and uh, I think we'll, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll finish. I'm sorry.